There's a quiet place in all the souls on earth, which I believe is always guiding us to fall into the comfort of the veil. Through this process, I found the story that summed up all the pain that my family shares. I set out to sift through the ashes of all the good things I burned down in my life. I wanted to search within my family to see if my trauma matched their trauma. What I unleashed was a brutal reality woven inside us all. A lot of us tried to ride that brutality away on the one thing that made sense to us. Our motorcycles. Who is a man with a gun in his hand without a uniform? Who is a judge who will not hold a grudge against the wrongs of a king? In the land of the brave, Monday enslaves the rich and the poor. Tell me where is the sound of the underground clicking a link to Ford? The Lord left us sound. I didn't know where the journey would end. I just knew it had to begin with my cousin Travis. Sounds good. Hey, this is day two. Travis, take one. My name is Travis Clark. I'm known as Travis the Terror Clark. I'm a professional fighter. I'm a professional boxer, kickboxer, and cage fighter. It's funny, so they call me the terror because uh, one of my mom's best friends growing up, she always she said, man, he's a little terror. So I've been a little terror since, I, I guess I've just been ripping and roaring for a long time. I'm always hyperactive, you know? Uh, the fighting, man, it really, it just, it just, it takes the, it takes the mean, it takes the aggression out of me. I, I can go home at night and enjoy the beautiful life that I have. Uncle Brad, how'd you get your nickname, Lucky? Actually, it was from the same girlfriend I was fighting over with Ronnie Trini with. She told me I was lucky to have her. I thought it was going to be like lucky to be alive or something like that. Well, that's what the basic story I told you. That's what the judge told me. The judge? What were you doing in the courtroom? Barroom fight. How old? About 25 then. Broke a guy's jaw. Bad fight. Bad fight. Do you feel like you have a demon in you? Or you oh, yeah, I definitely demons? got a demon in me. Describe it. I, th I try to stay on the good side of myself. I don't like being on the bit. When I'm feeling bad, I don't like, I don't like the way I, the things I think about. I got a list of people I want to kill before I die. And I already told everybody, I told the judge and everybody, if I, if I ever find out I'm dying from cancer or something like that, I'm going to start going down my list. This is a guy that needed a place to stay. with no bike or buddy of mine from back in, oh hell. I mean, what, 15, 20 years when we were growing up together. He needed a place to stay. I let him stay at my house. Well, he started disrespecting my house, disrespecting my wife and everything. I went downstairs to tell him he got to find a place to move to, get out of my house. I went down the bottom steps in the basement, he stuck me. He was on a lot of drugs. Okay. He ain't on the list anymore. Yeah. I, beat him, I beat him with a chair that was downstairs. He took care of that. Broke his collarbone. Yeah, I want him with another bone in his arm or something like that. Travis, how do you, how do you deal with things when they get bad? Some people ride motorcycles. It sounds like that's one of the things that you do that helps yes. you feel better, or cope with things. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, uh, I've, like I said, since I was young, I'd, like in the windows, my mom used to say, I used to like, I'd hear a motorcycle, she said, I'd scoop my ass to the window. I couldn't even walk. I was getting to the window trying to see if, if it was them. So, how do I've always had a help? love for motorcycles. I've always How motorcycles. Do they, help? they they calm me. I don't hear any bitching. I don't hear anybody complaining. All I hear is the wind, the motor. You see the beautiful scenery, and there's nothing that can bother you. It's you and your motorcycle. It is the best thing I've ever had in my life. Motorcycles in my brotherhood, and 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 I obviously, like I said, I get to hit stuff, so that helps. <laughs> but beating shit up doesn't bother the. Uh, you know, but uh, the, the only most relaxing, yeah, right? yes, only when yes, you get paid. only when you get paid. Right. 
But the uh, the most calming and and peaceful time of my life is when I'm on my motorcycle, and it makes everything go away. I can think. I think clearly. Whenever everything's overload, I ever there's too much pressure, there's too much everything. I get on my bike and I think it through. I just ride and uh, try to try to figure it out, man. That's all I can do. Anytime you get depressed, you get on your bike. It clears your head. There's, there's been a lot of nights, three o'clock in the morning, I'd wake up out of bed and I'd just throw some clothes on, go get on a bike and ride all night. Yeah. Is it the speed? Is it the curves? Is it the living life on the edge, literally? Nah, it's, it's just feeling the freedom. It's, freedom. it's definitely a freedom. Once you ride, you can't, you can't never get it out of you. The vibration, the road, the wind, it's just, it's just a great feeling. You got the power, you, you control that power with that throttle. How'd you get into fighting? Uh, my life was kind of a fight, man. Like I said, I, I grew up fighting. Uh, grew up in a little uh, little town called Bethesda in these apartment complexes and um, uh, I never really had a dad figure um, I had a stepdads who didn't give a fuck less they were they were probably the main reasons I was mad and fighting anyways um, but uh, my mom did my mom hated everything that I did <laughs> she, wrestling she hated because well she loved it but she hated it because I made her nervous about it all the time and but I was good, but I just, she was, she was one of the moms that was in the stands freaking out all the time, you know, and, and then somebody would say something, she'd be fighting in the stands with another parent. <laughs> but uh, it was cool, man. Uh, but the fighting, she really was not into. And then I was like, mom, you got, I'm good. Like, trust me, I'm good. You got to see what I do. And uh, every time never failed, you know, she, she was sitting there <laughs> biting her nails, scared to death, but uh, she she loved it. She was into it, and she knew I I could handle myself. So she was she she went everywhere. She was all she would she'd go any state I was in any anywhere. She was there. Real close to your mom. Super close. My mom was everything. My whole goal was to make her proud of me because <clears throat> I was a rough. I <laughs> I was a terror. You know, uh, <laughs> I was a pain in the ass, man. I really was. Um, I was mad at her because I thought she wasn't letting me see my dad. I was, uh, I was just a, I was a prick. I was an angry little kid, man. Uh, I didn't understand anything. I couldn't understand why my family wasn't like anybody else's. Couldn't understand why these guys were coming around trying to tell me and my, my brother and sister what to do. And uh, I just, uh, I just, I was mad. And I, was, I said mean things to her, but she always was there for me and always supported me. And you can grow up without a dad. People can do it all the time, but your mom is the nurturing, amazing person that will always no matter what be there for you and care for you no matter what so just know that you better if you see your mom you tell her you love her every day i was the son that you didn't really want to have i wasn't a ball player i was the most i did in sports was track i was pretty i was pretty good at track but i was an artist while my other brothers were out playing baseball and doing things with dad. I was at home drawing pictures and stuff. And he just, he thought that was just wrong. He had no idea that that was my future. I'd have been there brushing bikes and stuff like that right now and cars and everything if he'd let me go to art school. But the biggest problem was, like I said, when I come home with that Harley Davidson Panhead. The day I brought that home, that's the day my dad said that. I told you you're not gonna have a motorcycle live in my house. You got a choice, get rid of the motorcycle or I packed everything up and I left. I was in the bikes. I couldn't. I couldn't get it out of my blood. Bike takes some of the pain away. Oh yeah, yeah. Gave me a. That was my freedom. That was my way out of a, out of all the situation. If it was a bad day at home, I'd get on the bike and I'd ride for two or three days. I <laughs> didn't care where I went or how long I was going. Just just rode. I think my dad kind of resented the fact that Bruce bought a motorcycle after I bought that one. He didn't want Bruce riding. He wanted Bruce to be a ball player. That's the missing part of my life. The conversations with have the father and son conversations were never there. Never had them. I talked. We, we talk more now. I talked to that picture of him over the house than we did when, when he was alive. 
At least he can't walk away from me now. Uh, man, I had a pretty violent growing up. Um, I got to see my, my, my mom was abused a lot, and uh, <laughs> uh fucking crying already. Right. <laughs> my biological father. Um, you guys will meet him, I guess, Brad. Uh, and it was crazy because you know, like, it just it bothered me. It, 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 it still does, you know. Cause I can't believe he would do the shit he did. But drugs and alcohol did that to him. And uh, so that's why I try to change my path. Did you see any domestic violence growing up? Parents? Yeah. yeah. And my dad almost got beat with a ball bat for it. He hit my mother one time and I come downstairs and I said, hey, you do it again, then I'm gonna become a ball player. That's when he stopped hitting her. My mom was a good looking woman when she was young and she was a beautiful woman. Naturally guys are gonna to talk to her, they're gonna pay attention to her. And she worked at the diner and worked at the bowling alley as a waitress. Uh, what's gonna be at those places? Mostly guys. You know how guys are. You see a good looking woman, they're going, yeah, they're gonna check you out, they're gonna make comments, they're gonna say something. But you don't bring your wife home from work, bring her in the house and start beating her while your kids are upstairs supposed to be sleeping. I know I used to slap Petty when her and I get in an argument and everything, and I always I didn't like doing it. Petty was one of the Penny was one of the women, she would never shut up. Even when you're trying you say, okay, you win it. You win the fight, it's yours. She'd keep going on, yada, yada, yada. And it was wrong because my kids were sitting in the car. I was, doing, I was doing to my kids what my dad did to me. And it wasn't right. And Penny never really did anything to deserve me slapping her. I don't care how bad the argument was or what it was about. Did you ever get in a fight with your dad? Uh, we get into arguments. Uh, when I was 16 years old, the first day I got my license, I went looking for him. And uh, I got there. I got up there to Stuville. I went to every bar, I went to every bar, looking for him. I was gonna kick his ass. 16, 16 years old. Yeah. Going to every bar, looking for him. Yeah. Right. I kept telling them. They were like, "Who the fuck are you?" I said, "Hey, you, you know Lucky?" They're like, "Yeah, who are you?" I said, "I'm his son. Let him know I'm coming to kick his ass." So if I'm looking for him, tell him to call me. I'm gonna be at my grandma's. And uh, one of the people called him. Called him. Somehow they got a hold of him, and I got a phone call. And. Uh, I was up there and he came and met me at my grandma's. And when he got out of the car, he had a cast on his arm because somebody already beat him with a ball bat. So it was a, that was where we started our relationship from there. I you felt, felt sorry for him? I did, <laughs> which is fucked up, right? <laughs> so I. Uh, Who beat him with a baseball bat? It's hard to tell, man. I've been, since I'm. A lot of people want to kick his ass. My dad was that kind of guy, man. Like he was kind of like me in a way that uh, he was. Anybody gave him a look or something, he would be booming, going to kick their ass. But I guess sometimes they got the better of him because you know, he was a lot more beat up than he was, you know, up there. Like, I mean, I've, I've, I've seen my, I've had to go to the hospital for him being stabbed by idiots and things like that, you know. Friends, people that he loved and trusted, you know, and he just, he just lives a different lifestyle. It seemed like the only time my dad would talk to me is if he had a conflict with somebody in the mill. It was giving him a hard time at work or something. He'd tell me who the guy was and I'd go take care of it. Take care of it? Yeah, because he, he knew that would happen. So in his eyes, you were good for taking care of things like that? In his that. eyes, I was the muscle of the family, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was the one that took all the muscle work. Mm -hmm. You think you were able to get your message across to people that needed to get the message across? Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They scared you? The way I did things? Sometimes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Where do you think you learned how to make that sort of impression on people? <laughs> from earlier, from my, my childhood. People beating on me and bullying me around and pushing me around and stuff. I just got to a point I wasn't going to take it no more. Mm -hmm. And I refused to back down from anybody. 
going to take shit from anybody. Yeah, that's why I got knife wounds and bullet holes in my leg. I mean, I wish I'd had a better relationship with my father, but sometimes I think that's why I didn't have the relationship with my son that I should have had because of the way things went with my dad and I. He was a good guy, but he was just, he had his ways and I had mine. Fight with him a lot? It seemed like it was a fight every time we talked. Really? An argument about something. Just with words or? Just with words, yeah. The only time I ever physically touched my dad's when I got my, my my daughter's mother, she hated the mill towns. She, when I found her, I, everybody else goes to Daytona, brings back coconut heads for a souvenir and stuff like that. I go to Daytona, brought back a wife. Mm -hmm. She got pregnant, I had my daughter Shannon. And I had her at my place. It was, it was a biker house. It, it's like this, look, mo motorcycle memory all over the place and everything, bike in my living room. Mm -hmm. Well, my mom and dad had custody, you know, they babysat my daughter once in a while. I went up and got her and brought her down to my house for the, day, for the weekend. Mm -hmm. When my mother wanted her back up the house, when my dad came down and started cussing me out and everything about my daughter being in that kind of environment and stuff. Well, why would you do that? I said, look, that is in my life. That's my daughter. Get off my fucking back. He kept getting rowdy with me and everything. Then he grabbed a hold of me. And when he grabbed me, I grabbed him by the lapel and I picked him up in the air. And I realized what I was doing. I threw him over to the couch. That was the only time I ever physically ever grabbed my father. Did it end there? That's where it ended, yeah. He, 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 got, he got back up off the couch, went out and got in his car and went home. Did you ever talk about it with him afterwards? No, we never discussed it. I talked about it with my mother because he went home and told her. I said, look, Mom, he was telling me what to do with my daughter and stuff. He never had the time to tell me what to do with me, but he's going to tell me how to raise my daughter and everything. I said, that's what the whole fight was about, Mom. I said, then when he put his hand on me, I said, it wasn't going to happen. I love the man, and, and he's a legend in my mind. You know, My mom used to say when they would all, him and his buddies, I was a baby. She said, I'd, as soon as I would hear him, a motorcycle would go by, I was at the window looking for my dad, you know, because I loved him, and uh, to see him do the things he did to my mom, and just the way, I was an hour away. I lived right here, man. He lived in Stuartville, and I was, a, I was a state wrestling champion. I was a football legend. I, did, I mean, I did things that I thought he'd be proud of, and he never came to anything. I never wanted to show up. Oh, he came to one. I was in a, where fuck was we at? Wintersville, or one of the places up close to him. And I'm sitting, I'm on the line for my, my senior year and I hear Travis and I look over and there he was for the first time. I saw him at a football game, you know? And I started crying in the middle of a game like this that I can't control right now, which is pissing me off. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, so. Made you feel good. It did. It made me proud. Was he there after the game? He was. Did you have a conversation with him after the game? Yeah, we did, man, you know? And he just tells me he's proud of me. And like, even with these fights, man, like he comes watching me fight now and, uh, He's proud of me, you know, but it's just, uh, I don't know. I mean, it feels good that your dad's proud of you. That's what you want. That's what you want, you know, but, you know, it, it makes me wonder how my mom's dead and he's the one who put to us through all the suffering and he's still alive. So I got a little resentment there, you know. Uncle Brad, can you tell us a little bit more about your therapy though? Did it work at all? Yeah, part of it did work. It kept me from killing one of my ex-wives, my, my third wife. One day I was over at my brother Bruce's house, and her and I was having an argument, a fight about something. She had taken my brother's car to go do something, and she was supposed to be right back. She didn't come back, and my brother's getting upset. He's getting upset, so I'm getting upset at her. I'm ready to, I wanted to punch her, I did. I don't know what happened, just something in my head snapped and I ended up, the last thing I remember was sitting over in the corner by my brother's stair, staircase, shaking and just talking about stupid shit and everything. My sister and her husband come over and picked me up, took me out to Cambridge. And I spent, if I remember right, three months out at Cambridge. What's Cambridge? It's a mental institution. Yeah. What was it like in Cambridge? Yeah. Scary. Real scary. Why? Because you're talking to doctors about stuff that you don't even want to talk about. You know, and they, they get it out of you. They, they got a way of getting you to talk about things you don't want to talk about. Don't you think they're trying to help? 
Yeah, they were, they were trying to get things out of me I didn't want anybody knowing anything about. Why? My, my little secrets that I wanted to keep. Why? Because they were mine, and I didn't think anybody else had any business knowing anything about it. Things that I had done that I knew I shouldn't have done, but I did them. Were they your secrets because they would have gotten you in trouble if people? They were my secrets because they made me feel bad. They made me feel bad about myself. You said that they were your secrets because you didn't want anybody else to know them. Okay. So when things, when you mess up things so bad, you, like Josh was saying, you just can't push it down all the time. It keeps coming back up. Well, I'm 67 years old. And I've beat a lot of ass in my life, and I've, I've had my ass beat kicked a lot in my life. But no man wants to be hurting that bad where he stands, he sits around the house, he's, he's crying. Things just come to his head, he just starts crying for no reason. Those are the secrets I didn't want to let out. My feelings. Why? Because you think that makes you a pussy or something? Yeah, makes you feel like less of, less of a man. Did me, did me anyhow. Do you think that real men don't have those feelings? Or real men don't express those feelings? They don't express those feelings. So everybody has those feelings. Why don't you think that you can express them? Because I don't want to feel that weak. For me, that feels weak. How does it feel to be totally open? Doesn't that feel good? Right now, I feel kind of weak. You've been therapy before? I have. When I lost my mom, I lost my mom suddenly. My mom was my best friend, man. Uh, yeah. She was everything to me. She, she was the, uh, she's the whole reason I even fight, man. Like, all I ever want to do is buy her a house and Penny make her. Penny was insane. His mom was a <laughs> fucking saint. I just wanted to make her how happy. Old she when, how old did she win? How she old was, were you when she died? Uh, I was 35. 35. You were therapy for the first time, 35 years old. Yeah, man, and uh, what made you do that? Couldn't, do couldn't understand why. Like I said, like all these, all these good people that I believe were saints and were people that should be living are dying, and then there's people that don't fucking deserve to live. You got child rapes, you got idiots, you got whatever have you on this side. They're still breathing our air, and made me question God made me question everything. Well, if there's a God, why is he taking the right people? Why am I living this way when all I want to do is have a good family, be life? But... What was your experience with nurse? I went five times. I told the guy what I had to say, and it made an unbelievable... Just, it made it... Made it I got to... I said, I said things that I never got to say. I said things... I told him things that my mom never even knew because I didn't want to put that on my mom on her deathbed, but I needed to say it. But I wanted to protect her. I didn't want her to feel like she was insecure, like not a good mom, you know? I didn't want her to feel like she was inadequate because she wasn't. She was fucking the best mom and she tried to protect me as much as she could. But there's things you can tell that therapist about your mom. Uh, about my mom, about things that happened to me that my mom never knew that I couldn't tell her because I didn't want to break her heart. And I didn't, more than she already was, she already knew she was fucking dying, man. And she said, starved her, she was dying. She kept saying, I don't want to die, I don't want to die. And uh, I told her she wasn't going to die alone. And she didn't, man. I, I, I stayed up with her the whole night. I held her hand, I, I was there when she took her last breath. Where's your dad? Fuck, I don't know, he wasn't nowhere. He's never around, man. That was the thing. So. But as a man, the fucking most honorable thing I did was hold my mom's hand when she took, she took her last breath and died. But as a man, I can't, for the first couple years after she passed away, I couldn't see nothing but that. Everybody's like, oh, remember the good times. Remember this. All I could see was her take her last breath and pass away in my arms. So it fucked me up. And uh, like I said, man, there's changes you gotta fucking make in life. And there's things that happen in life and if you don't fucking make that change, you're gonna go down the same path. 
All right, guys, so here it is, man. This is where I went to elementary school. And this is my new gym. So this is uh, gonna be our community room. This is my first grade class. This is where we let uh, community activities, anything they wanna do, we're gonna be doing on in here. I got my own jujitsu room in my third grade class, which was Miss Golf. I feel at home here. This is where I uh, get out the other 30% of stress when I don't have 70% on my bike. One of my favorite rooms and special rooms is my autistic room. Um, I do a lot with autistic children. I do a lot to uh, change the way that life has been brought to them. We need to be aware that it's becoming more and more of an of a issue. You know, it, it's a real thing. Autistic children are here. We need to be able to deal with it. So this is one of the rooms we do adaption stuff with. We do a lot of stuff with, with our colors, a lot of sensitivity, a lot of things of that nature. The room that changed my life, uh, her name is Chris Parker. She was my second grade teacher. She was the first person who believed in me. <laughs> Here I am with them goddamn tears again. But uh, Miss Parker, um, she was an awesome person. And she believed in me since I was in kindergarten, man. And uh, and Mrs. Parker, when I turned, when I was in sixth grade, Mrs. Parker's son passed away. Uh, There's a festival down the road called Jamboree in the Hills, and he got electrocuted. Every day I rode the bus, and when I would ride the bus, I'd get off here, right there. I'd knock on her window. I say, "Hey, Miss Parker, you okay?" Well, to this day, Miss Parker calls me every day and makes sure I'm okay. This is this room. This room has not been done yet because. This is the last room that I've done anything with in this building because it's gonna be the best and most special room because uh, this room encouraged me that you can change your life. Not Everything's not set in stone. You can make changes. And uh, Ms. Parker made that true for me. So this room means a lot to me. You gotta break the chain, you gotta break the cycle, man. And I know I'm a, I'm a biker, I know I, uh, I love my motorcycle club, I love my family, but I know when I'm having a when I'm having a rough time and I feel like I'm gonna go back to my old ways or hurt somebody or do some bad things, I'll go visit my dad. And I'll say, don't be like him. Being sorry for something is acceptable. I understand, we all make mistakes. There's a lot of things in life that I regret, but if you're still alive, you can change it. You can start, every day's a new day. Why is it that we seek redemption from those who gave us the pain? The pain is what made us believe we needed to be redeemed in the first place. If I don't answer your question, there's a reason, right? Brad, you remember the first time you saw Travis on the bike? What'd mm -hmm. you think? Yeah, I was, he was on a Harley Davidson Buell. I was in my Lincoln Continental, I come up the scene, and he took my wife for a ride. <laughs> Pulled out of the parking lot, at, what was the name of that bar? Pitts. Pitts. My wife was like this when he pulled out of the lot. But my wife on the back of it. And she's just a little skinny thing, darling. Is. Scared the shit right out of me. <laughs> her, hold on. <laughs> I, I, punched, I, I punched the gas pedal down on that lap. That Lincoln Continental was smoking tires. We got to his house, I said, what the hell are you doing? That's exactly how I said. I said, what the fuck was you doing? Uh -huh. He said, I want to show her how the bike, what the bike would do. I said, yeah, okay. She didn't die. <laughs> She's good. Well, Travis just, I think maybe two going on three. On North 4th Street to Steubenville, and that big picture window, when I, when I come down come down 4th Street on my, my Harley, he stick his finger like he knew that was my, me on that bike. That was my dad, that's my dad on that bike. That made me proud, yeah, I was proud. You 
He was a hero, man. He was a hero. I loved it. You know, I always looked up to that. I loved it. My dad, well, he was doing one or two things in his life. Either working in that goddamn mill, when he wasn't working in the mill, he had Bruce and Bryce and Brian out of the goddamn baseball field playing bad. I wasn't a sport, I, I wasn't in, in the sports. I wasn't a good baseball player. I just wasn't. And that was my whole dad's world. All I ever wanted to be was an artist. <laughs> and I got the athletic shit. <laughs> and you got the art. How did that work out, right? No man, I mean, it's all I mean, good. It's and it's you know when you tell it when you when I actually we sit down and talk about it, I guess it makes fucking more well, sense. I'm not putting your grandfather down. This that's yeah. the way he was. Oh, I get it. I, I don't get know if that's it, the way he and, was and raised. Listen, I, I, I don't feel know if that's like the way him a lot. What it was. I uh, I there are days when I'll be like around family and I'll go lay in my bed, while people's at the house, you know, because I'm just overwhelmed with shit. I remember being like, that's what Grandpa did there for the last few years, you know? He'd be just like, we'd be there, and he'd just go get to, go to his room and turn on sports, you know? And that was his thing, you know? And uh, I don't know, man. I just, I don't know. I just wish shit was different. But that's the thing, man. And it just seems like, you know what's fucked up about it, man? Like, Stuvenville. And Morristown's just fucking far <laughs> on the map. It's just far in reality. And it just seems like we never can make it happen. And it sucked because I was there, you know. And then, like, when I started getting older, and and then, like, I was like, man, I wish you could see what I'm doing now, you know. Like, I'm kicking ass, so I'm fucking people up. And, 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 and sports and just, you know, and I know it wasn't your thing, but I was just trying. I was like, man, maybe he'll see that. He'll be proud of me. <laughs> Think, well, that's my boy. I was always proud of you. It just fucking sucked. Kids are always doubting their dads for being like, oh, <laughs> It's fucking so hard on me. I'm like, damn, dude, I wish my dad be like, yo, do something better, you know? It just, it's just, but when you look at it, it turned me into the dad that I am today. No one, you know? I blame my mom for a lot of it. I thought that she didn't want me to see my dad. No, it was none of your mom's fault. And I was real, real angry towards her all the time. And I was a real asshole. And, uh, I just didn't. I didn't. I didn't know why I couldn't be around him or what the hell was going on, you know. And you know, like I said, that's you know. Sometimes fucking time changes your perception of how things went or whatever. So hopefully, you know. I don't know. Now, when I realized what I was doing to her, she didn't deserve it in any way. And I knew it was time that they were trying to get me to leave anyhow. I knew it was time just I'm doing more harm to my family, I'm doing more harm to my wife. Get out of here, leave her alone. As fucked up as it sounds, as fucked up as it is, he thought he was doing better without being around, you know, and I don't know that he's not right. Cause if it was, was it gonna be fighting? Was it gonna you know, how much more shit did I need to see my mom go through? No. Nah. You know, and there, there, uh, was, there was never going to be no more of that. Because that, that, that shit fucking it, it hit me hard, you know, and uh, it's it's just the way it is, man. Like fucking he was he was a kid, too. He didn't fucking know how to be a man, obviously. He just, you know, women aren't here for that. They're not any kind of abuse, verbal, physical, mental. If, if the situation is working out. Then you gotta go the other direction. You just gotta go. But I, I had to realize what I was doing was so wrong. It was it was fucking my head up too. Yeah. You know, and I, I just realized what, what what I was doing at the time. The arguing and, and sitting in the car and slapping my wife. No, you don't do that. Man's fucked up. You know, I was fucked up a lot. I'm still fucked up. But uh, it's the way it goes. That's how it goes, you know. Like they, they, just, they were both fucking. My mom was a kid, raising kids. Yeah. My dad was my dad. <laughs> you know, he's fucking. You know, and that's just how it is, man. And life's fucked up, dude. Like you can't. And 
thinking that you're better than somebody or thinking that you would do something different. You don't fucking know until you're in that situation yourself, man. And ultimately, that's what I'm learning every fucking day is don't judge anybody because you never know where you're going to be tomorrow. You don't fucking everybody wants to be the white picket fence, happy fucking family. And life's fucking hard. Family's hard. Take care of yourselves hard, let alone making sure your family's taken care of. Yeah. And if your family fucking cast you out, then how the fuck do you know what family's supposed to be? You don't always make the right decision. I'll never get back to the time that I, this was him and my brother, his brother and stuff, and my daughter. Never get it back, and I'll always, always my whole life it'll be a part of me just empty because of that. Yeah. I've always been a guy that I wouldn't show my feelings to anybody because I didn't, never was taught to. I was never taught to about it or anything. All I knew was I didn't want to feel that hurt. I didn't want to feel that pain. So I just didn't, I would, I would force myself into not feeling it. The crying part, nah, it, it scares me. I don't want to feel that. I don't want to, it's there. Well, there's probably not a day that goes by that I don't cry about something, one thing or another, something going on. I think the thing that hurt me the most once, and that's when I realized that I was a real screw up then. I was at one of Travis's fights, and they were honoring the parents and everything. That day, and Travis called Penny and up to the ring and stuff. Well, Homer went with him, with her. It was like, yeah, yeah. What the fuck's Homer doing here? I'm supposed to be there. That's my son, not Homer's son. And that, that broke my heart, it did. And I left the fight that night. I set out in my car. I know I probably sat out there and cried for a good hour before I could drive away. But I realized I brought that on myself. I did that. Not Homer, not Penny, not Kim, not Terry. I did that. What's the right way to say this? What I have in life right now, I don't deserve. I don't deserve to be sitting across from this young man right now. I'm so glad that I am. I didn't do anything to make this man the man he is. This man made himself. And I'm so goddamn proud of this man. So glad he didn't go down the path I went down. My dad never told me about me until I saw him on his deathbed. And I had to tell him first that I loved him. My whole life, my father never once told me he loved me. And I will not go a day if I can help it without telling you that I love you, son. And I respect you. Thank you. And you mean so much to me, you'll never understand it. I love you too.